Welcome to St. Wendelin Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, known as Gaudete Sunday, Rejoice. Let us join together in praying for our diocese through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. The prayer is at the back of the hymnal. Heavenly Father, with the redeeming cross of Christ Jesus, your Son, and the gifts of your Holy Spirit, renew and strengthen us so that by our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we may foster holy disciples, holy families, and holy vocations so as to become a more holy diocese of Toledo. We turn to Our Lady, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, for her intercession never failing prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
rejoice in the Lord always. Why can I say rejoice? Indeed, the Lord is here. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. As the day of the Lord draws near, we praise him in song by singing on Jordan's Bank, number 278. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, on this third Sunday of Advent, we are invited to rejoice in the Lord, for he is near. In anticipation of the joy of Christmas, we light the third candle, the rose candle, on the Advent wreath recalling that joy is one of the surest signs of God's presence among us. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adored with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. 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 My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. 
He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. 
The Gospel of the Lord. I'm not an artist, but I guarantee you that no human hand painted it. No human hand painted it. I'm talking about the Tilma of Guadalupe. For the last several days, December 9th through 12th, we've celebrated the apparitions of Our Lady of Guadalupe to Juan Diego back in the year 1531. The culmination of those encounters between Our Lady of Guadalupe and Juan Diego was the miraculous image on the tilma. And probably everybody here knows we have an image in our Adoration Chapel of Our Lady of Guadalupe, so you could check that out if it's been a while. The tilma is the very long, rough, burlap-like woven fabric. It was already miraculous enough that Juan Diego had wrapped up a bunch of roses in the front part of that tilma, wrapped them up, roses that Our Lady had indicated to him at the top of the hill of Tepeyac in the dead of winter. It was already a miracle that those roses actually were even there. Juan Diego thought that was the miracle that would make the bishop finally believe that this lady from heaven wanted a shrine built in her honor and the honor of her son. But the roses really were not the biggest miracle. When Juan Diego unrolled his tilma to allow the roses to spill out onto the floor in front of the bishop, the bishop's eyes froze on the image which now appeared on the front of the tilma. It was an amazing image of the Blessed Virgin Mary, now known as Our Lady of Guadalupe. I'm not an artist, but I I guarantee you no human hand painted it. You can still go and visit that image today in the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. Instead of the color just appearing on the surface side of the material, as if somebody had brushed it on like paint, the fibers in that rough woven material are actually each colored through entirely in precisely the correct places to make that image happen. Impossible with the technology of 1531. Then it's a miracle that the tilma still exists today when the material should have deteriorated centuries ago. The image is this perfect blend of Spanish cult Catholic culture and Aztec culture of the day. In other words, the image spoke beautifully to, to both cultures and it served to evangelize the Aztec culture. There's still more. With the computer capacity these days, they were able to lift the mantle, that blue thing she's wearing with stars on it, lift the mantle from her shoulders and unfold that mantle against the sky. They discovered that the arrangement of the stars on the mantle perfectly matches the actual position of the stars the night of December 12, 1531 the day Juan Diego unrolled that tilma in front of the bishop. Then with microscopic photography, it was discovered that in the eyes of Our Lady of Guadalupe, you can see the reflection of the bishop as he's looking upon that image for the first time, just like a real human eye that takes in the image and reflects it. No way a human hand actually painted microscopic images in the eyes of the Blessed Virgin Mary on that tilma. Needless to say, the local bishop now believed, and they built the shrine to Our Lady of Guadalupe as she requested. And Mexico is Catholic because of her apparitions in 1531. Now the whole Western Hemisphere is consecrated to her by a decree of Pope St. John, uh, John Paul II. The Lord moves in the world even miraculously as his wind wisdom sees fit. And he always uses the intervention of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Please, please, consecrate your life to the Blessed Virgin Mary if you've never done so before. No surprise, Juan Diego became a saint because he encountered the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
you and I can become saints if we allow the encounter with the Blessed Virgin Mary. God is always at work where the Blessed Virgin Mary is found. We had another super important feast this week on December 8th, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. God intervened in the normal course of human generation, the normal process of the marital embrace and conception and birth, to prevent the Blessed Virgin Mary from ever being touched by original sin. For every human person before her and after her, the wound of original sin is inevitable. Anybody who's honest knows there's a struggle that goes on. There's a wound seated in the will, in the heart, from original sin. But the Blessed Virgin Mary, this one person in all of history, she was preserved at the very moment of her conception from any taint of original sin, and of course, she never committed any actual sin throughout her entire life. Please allow her to help you strive for the sinless life, the sinless life in Jesus Christ. Consecrate your life to her every morning. That's what for, right after Father, Son, Holy Spirit acknowledging the Holy Trinity and thanking my Heavenly Father for another uh, day of life he's given me, I say a consecration prayer, Maximilian Colby's consecration prayer uh, to Our Lady, just to make sure every fiber of my being is given to her to the best of my ability. Consecrate your life to her. Gaudete Sunday, which we celebrate today. Rejoice Sunday. On this Sunday, in addition to the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose song we sang as our psalm response, that was her Magnificat, rather than the usual Old Testament psalm at that place, we once again focus on the person of St. John the Baptist, like we did last week. Today, he is pointing to Jesus Christ, the one Savior to come. What great humility for John the Baptist not to build himself up, when people wanted to call him the prophet or the savior because they were so impressed with him. What great humility to point everybody towards Jesus Christ. Gaudete Sunday, rejoice Sunday. The Blessed Virgin Mary staying away from all sin, obediently following God's plan for her life. St. John the Baptist humbly pointing to Jesus Christ rather than taking the glory for himself. Gaudete Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. Sinlessness, obedience, humility exhibited by the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. John the Baptist. What a great formula leading to joy. Avoid sin live in obedience to God's plan for our life, and live humility rather than trying to build up glory for ourselves. That's the joyful life. Of course, it's sinlessness and humility and obedience which serve to make a gift of ourselves in love to God and others. And joy comes from that gift, that relational gift of ourselves to God first and to others. It's the secret for living the joyful life. It's really impossible to live love if we're not striving for sinlessness, obedience, and humility. And that means it's impossible to know deep joy if we're not striving to be sinless, obedient, and humble. Jesus Christ the Lord of our joy, the cause of our joy in God, comes to us sinless, obedient, and humble in Holy Mass, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Let's allow him into our hearts today more deeply than ever before. Let's allow him truly to be the cause of our joy.
Now we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great trust in our Lord's goodness and mercy, we bring to him our needs. For all who preach the gospel, that their words may bring glad tidings to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to captives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that it may be blessed with an ever more effective voice in the world, to herald the joy of the gospel to all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons, that through their ministry of service they may help prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people and for countries throughout the world, that justice, liberty, and peace may spring up before all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick members of our parish community and for those who are discouraged or depressed, that they may persevere in prayer and find strength in God's loving care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, that we may help to prepare the world for Christ's coming by living lives of peace, joy, love, and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed and the intentions of this Mass, especially for John Diaz, Bernice Bodart, and Rita Ettinger, who died this week, and for Jack Altweiss, Annabelle Bullion, Jeffrey Schlitt, Thomas Weber, Richard and Betty Kelby, and Karen and Michael Sesney, that they might live forever in the peace of heaven, where a thousand years will be as one day, and every tear will be wiped away. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts and altar are prepared, we sing together, wait for the Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice for your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As we receive our Lord in Holy Communion, we sing together, Taste and See, number 789. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, for he has looked with mercy on my loveliness, and my name He has revealed 
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Thanks be to God. Father Pugamayer will be in the confessional on Tuesday for a day of grace. Stop by at any time, 8 to 10, noon to 2, 4 to 5, and after the 515 Mass until 7. Don't miss this chance to cleanse your heart and soul for Christmas. A reminder that our Christmas schedule is as follows, 4 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve, in midnight and 10 a.m. on Christmas. The obligation is dispensed due to COVID. Please make sure to let friends and family who may be attending with you know of our procedures. If you did not get them last week, 2021 calendars, courtesy of Caning Funeral Home, are available for pickup after Mass in the gathering space. Please take some to friends and family. Also, Tuesday's Mass is at 5.15 p.m. as normal. There's a mistake in the bulletin that says 9 a.m. So Tuesday's Mass is normal at 5.15 in the evening. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As we go forth, we sing together, O come, O come, Emmanuel, number 274. We will sing verses 1, 6, and 7. 